Welcome back to this Medicine Work Experience series. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the really important elements of work experience, which is paid work. We're going to follow the same format that we did in this entire playlist if you want to get the whole picture of work experience, but we're going to look at why you should do it, how you go about doing it, how often, what kind of thing you should do, what resources you need, and then finally the biggest action step that you need to take when you're in that bit of work experience. So paid work is exactly what it says on the tin. It is a job where you are expected to be there and you are paid to do so. Now, you'll have heard me talk about uh, shadowing and volunteering in these videos here in this series. However, this is very different. And the reason it is so is because when you do those other two things, as important as they are, gaining insight from shadowing or volunteering to show that you're self-sacrificing and give back, those are not ones that require your responsibility. The shadowing, you're just a fly on the wall and really it makes no difference whether you're there or not. Volunteering is a nice thing to do, but nobody is really relying on you and expecting you to be there in the same way that they do when you have a paid job. So responsibility is so important. But the next reason why a paid job and kind of having that as your arsenal of work experience that you're demonstrating to the med school is that you have transferable skills and there are lots. If you can think of maybe, let's say for example, you work in a restaurant and lo and behold, always people are complaining about food. It's very similar to when people get upset because they're in hospital and they complain for various reasons, uh, rightly or wrongly, but they draw a lot of parallels with those difficult communication scenarios that really help if you can handle and just know how to mitigate people who are angry and kind of help pacify them and make them feel better and resolve the situation. Then we're going to talk about the what and the how much. So if you saw this video on volunteering, you saw me talk about the minimum effective dose. Now, when you're going through that 18 month medical application process, it's really important to not be too bogged down with something. So you want enough of the paid work so that you gain the skills and hopefully the money, but you don't want to do so much that it takes away from all the other key aspects, the five key aspects really of the med school application. If you don't know what those are, you can check them out in this video. But it's really important to get the balance right between doing little and often, and like I say, saving time to focus on the key areas of the med school application. Now, the what is really dependent on your age. If you are over 18, I think the best thing that you can possibly do is get a job as a healthcare assistant in your local hospital really good for being as close to you can as being a doctor without actually being a doctor, unless you've got obviously other qualifications like physiotherapy or things where you're patient facing. However, if you're under 18, then I still think that a hospital job is the best way to do it. And it's personally something that I did um, when I was about 16, 17, purely because it paid well, but then I ended up liking it, enjoyed patient interaction, got loads of experience. And that was when I decided to go into medicine off the back of that job. So it just shows how much it can, can catapult you and help build a really strong candidate. So if you're under 18, things like cleaning in the hospital, if you're cleaning on a ward, you'll still be patient facing. If you're serving the food in the hospital, which is what I did, you have a lot of interaction with patients. But anything, even working in the hospital shop, it's just being in the environment for good things to happen. And it will set the foundation probably for you arranging great volunteering experience and great shadowing experience off the back of it. So just being in the hospital environment will create massive benefits for you. But even if you can't get a hospital job, that's fine. Like I said before, working as wait staff is a great way to demonstrate those transferable skills. If you work in a shop and you're trusted to handle money and you need to be given the keys and trusted to lock up, those are just some signs that you are the kind of person and possess the traits of trust and other things that they want to see in a good doctor. So next section talking about the frequency, again, same as the volunteering, little and often, just so steady commitment to something. That is another trait that you can show by doing something for a long time consistently. So the how that you do this is very similar to how we talked about arranging shadowing experience. Call the local hospital switchboard, ask to speak to the housekeeping department. They may have some jobs for you. But then the next bit that we talked about, which is resources, is going on a website called NHS Jobs, and you'll be able to find whatever's available there. However, I still believe that calling is more fruitful, as I explained in that shadowing video. And again, as I explained in the volunteering video, the most important thing is to just record your insights, record any interesting stories, especially if you're working in hospital, and just make sure that you capture all the details. So again, think forward to when you're going to tell that story in your personal statement at interview, and how are you going to paint a really good picture of what's happened by remembering all the details? Remember that we forget so much and 
at the time it's so vivid we think we'll never forget it how could we possibly forget it but trust me in six months time it will be a different story when you want to remember the name of that disease or what it what exactly happened what the situation was these are really important details to make a good story now if you want to find out the other elements that make a really good work experience package check out this playlist here otherwise if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help to arrange the best kind of work experience and also maximize your performance in all areas of the med school application those five key areas that you need to smash check out this video here where we can tell you exactly how we can help you get into your first choice medical school at the first attempt.